earlier this week, there was a video that was posted online showing a, a white woman at the Jefferson Mall uh, spewing racist insults to two other women. And, and you responded to that saying that you were saddened, disappointed, and there's just really no place for that. Uh, this kind of goes in line. You have a big plan for immigration in Louisville, and I want you to talk about that and kind of how you're leaning on immigration to fuel the economy moving forward. You know, the first thing I think I want to talk about with the economy is that Louisville is going through an unprecedented renaissance right now. When you talk about the big picture, then we can get down into strategies like globalizing our city. Uh, but we have $9 billion of capital construction going on in Louisville right now, and that has never anything been close to that before and that's why you see all the cranes going on in our city right now it's a very exciting time 60,000 new jobs in the past five years 2,600 new businesses unemployment rates below four percent we were over ten percent five years ago I'm really proud that 10,000 people uh, worked themselves out of poverty over the last year into the middle class and this is how cities are going to be judged in terms of who how we're doing well in the future as well 23 new hotels under construction as well our biggest challenge as it relates to economic development right now is we have 30,000 open jobs in the community. 10,000 of those require a degree, 20,000 do not. So the question for us in the city is where are those people going to come from? How are we going to upskill the people that we have right now? And globalizing our city is a big part of that strategy. Over half of the population growth of the city uh, in the last 10 years has come from foreign-born residents. So. Any great city is a global city. We've got to have a city where kids that are raised here are as comfortable operating in Louisville, Kentucky, as they would be in Singapore or Pakistan or, or Cape Town, South Africa. So, And cities that are globalized are much more interesting as well. So we're seeing a lot of uh, progress in that area. Why do you think, you know, back to that video real quick, why do you think that happened? Do you think that people are feeling emboldened right now? Certain people are feeling emboldened to, 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 to uh, say certain things in the aftermath of Donald Trump's election? Well, there's no question about that. You see that taking place all over the country right now. Uh, fortunately for us, until this incident uh, yesterday or the day before, we had not had seen any type of hate-related issues in our city. We've you know, got five years in a row, international model city for compassion. People lean into compassion here in our city. But I've spent a considerable amount of my time since the presidential election trying to uh, understand, are trying to explain to our foreign-born populations, most of whom are Amer American citizens, how our government works here, how there's separation of power. When they hear things like Muslim registries and building a wall, they're very, very concerned about their futures here in our country. As a matter of fact, one uh, gentleman from Turkey said, you know, he worked his whole life so he could come to America. He said, my American dream is turning into a nightmare. And I, you know, so I try to calm them down and say, don't worry, that's not going to happen. You're here as a legal U.S. citizen. Uh, but with some of the language used in the uh, presidential election, it's understandable why people are concerned. Uh, what we've communicated is that we are a welcoming city, a city of compassion, a city that's dedicated to both safety and globalization, and they are welcome here.